So the next concept that I want to talk about is average rate of change. And the most important thing to remember about average rate of change is that it's always between two points. So the points x1, y1 and the points x2, y2. So average rate of change is basically the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable between those two points or delta y over delta x, so the change in y over the change in x, which we can also rewrite as the change in y being y2 minus y1 over the change in x, x2 minus x1. And notice how this here uh, is the same as the slope formula that we learned in a few grades back. So. For example, let's say that we have this function here and we want to find the average rate of change between this point, so let's label that as x1 and y1, and then this point here, let's label that as x2 and y2. So what we would do is we would find the slope of the line that connects these two points. Right, that should be a straight line, so pardon my, uh, my drawing there. So the slope of this line between those two points would give us the average rate of change. And this line here is actually called the secant line. So another thing that uh, you can add over here is the average rate of change is also equal to the slope of the secant line. And the secant line is always between two points on a function. Now the last point I want to make is what units the average rate of change is expressed in. And it's expressed as how much the dependent variable changes per one unit change in the independent variable. So for example, if we have a function h of t where we're modeling the height of let's say a soccer ball uh, in terms of its time from the time it's kicked, then the height, let's say that it's measured in meters and obviously the height would be the dependent variable. And the time, let's say it's measured in seconds, and this is the independent variable. This is what would be on the x-axis. Well, if we were given some kind of function and we're finding the average rate of change of the soccer ball, then we would get some kind of amount, some kind of number when we plug it into this formula, when we find the slope of the secant line between the two points. So it would be some kind of number and that would represent meters per one unit change in the independent variable per second. All right, so the units, the average rate of change is always measured in the dependent variable, some kind of amount of the dependent variable per one unit change in the independent variable. And we'll go over that in uh, more future examples in the next few videos we're going to go over average rate of change and we're going to find it from a table of values from an equation and from a graph so we'll be sure to uh, add in these units at the end as well